All right. Welcome to Going Live Best Practices. This is our second workshop of today, uh, and I hope you're here to learn about how to launch a website on Pantheon. Before we jump into that, I'm John Richards. I'm a developer advocate at Pantheon, um, where I try to help um, provide training and resources to all the wonderful people using our platform. Um, and so if you've got questions or thoughts as we go along, please feel free to share them. Always happy to help answer questions for anybody's specific situation. Uh, to that point, maybe you're wondering how you can participate. Well, if you're on one of our streaming services, you can post in the chat right there. Uh, if you're here in Zoom, you can post in the chat or in the q and I've got all of them up and I'll be monitoring them as we go along. So if you have questions, I'll try to answer them. Um, and then we'll have some time at the end if you want to ask questions or have specific scenarios you want to talk about. Um, you're here at this workshop, so you know about them, but just a reminder that we have other workshops available as well. If you want to sign up for those, you can do so at pantheon.io forward slash live hyphen workshops. We've got, uh, obviously, this is our going live best practices. We're at getting ready to end the month. So next, this is a perfect time if you're wanting to check out the other workshops. Um, they'll be available as well. Um, we do getting started because it's our introductory workshop every Thursday. Um, but we also have other workshops available on the first, second, third, and fourth Thursdays. Um, so if you want to check out one of those deep dives, um, those will be coming up next month. All right, so Pantheon is a website operations platform. So we're talking here about how web ops streams line, how you get your work done through agile tools and processes. Uh, and when we talk about launching a website, this is a great time to think about web ops. Uh, what do we mean by that? Well, web ops um, is about everybody involved in that decision making and in, in how things work. And so whenever you go to launch your site, it's this is the most critical piece that you remember that it is not just a developer operation, even though um, they play an incredibly important part in this process, uh, but make sure that you've got uh, designers involved, the stakeholders are involved. Of course, maybe you're running a, a, a shop where you're kind of wearing all the different hats or you're in a role where you're the only person tackling all of these, that's okay. Uh, but make sure you take some time to set aside for each of those important roles to review the website. It can be too easy if you have to wear all those hats to forget to really um, take the time to, to look at it from a different direction and say, hey, um, is this easy to use? Is this meeting the objectives that we've set out for our website? Uh, but um, before we dive into all of that, this is focused really on best practices, um, but we'll also be talking about how what you need to launch your site. And while you'll want to follow these best practices, um, it's actually really easy to launch a site. Uh, there's only four steps needed. So that's the bare minimum. Hopefully you'll do more, but if you need to launch a website, it needs it to be up today, something like that, then know you can do so in just four easy steps. Um, and be ready to roll. Well, hopefully they're easy because of course, any one of these steps could be fraught with red tape or um, other challenges as well. Uh, so while technically uh, the actual action of these is pretty easy, um, you may know from experience that getting approval to do these steps can sometimes take uh, a lot of effort. So with that in mind, let's, oh, well, let me run through those four. Just wanna make sure you, I mean, they're listed here, uh, but the important thing is um, if you were at our previous workshop, we did a live demo of how to move code on Pantheon all the way from dev to test to live, and you're gonna need to do that. Now we did that for a site that already existed, uh, but for a new site, you'll actually be moving not just the code, but also the database and files. And so as you move that up, you'll move everything up to all the way into production. Um, which makes sense. If you're going to want to have a site for people to access, you want to launch that site, it's important that it is um, the data is in production so people can see it in that live environment. Now, once everything is in live, um, a step of that is going to be choosing a plan. Uh, so we offer free sandbox sites. Um, so you don't really have to pay for anything until you're ready to launch your site. And so now is when you would choose the plan that's going to underlie um, what you're doing. And then you'll attach a domain. Um, your site, um, well, you may even be aware of this. We looked at, when we look at dev and test sites, there's a URL that can be accessed from the web so you can show people. So in a way you can think of them as, as being live. Um, but once you launch it, the important piece is adding whatever domain you have to your website. Uh, and this is where, you know, like us, pantheon.io, um, 
now that tells people go to this specific so spot, see this website. So you add in your domain name, um, and then you're going to need to configure the DNS. So you've attached a domain here at Pantheon, but now you need to go to wherever you purchase that domain and say, hey, my domain lives at Pantheon. Uh, and so once you've done this, you are good to go. Your website is ready to go live. So again, the process is moving all of your data, all of your code, database, and files all the way up to production. And when you do so, you'll choose the plan at Pantheon that works best for you. Then you'll say, hey, here's the domain I want to use. And then you'll go to where you purchased that domain and tell it, hey, Pantheon's the place that I'm using to host my website. So with those four steps in mind, let's let's now step back a little bit and start talking about best practices and walk through some things to do as you prep for those four steps that will finally take your site into um, available for everyone. So you want to talk to everyone and make sure you're all on the same page. It's super important. So talk to your team, whatever that looks like. Um, if you are an agency, this is a good time to talk to your customer or maybe um, you're an internal group and you've got content creators who need to know about it. But if you have been working in dev or test up until this point and now you're going live, people may now need to go to a new URL to, do, to add in content, things like this. So make sure they know what's happening. Make sure people know what time these changes will happen. Um, and if there's any kind of um, content freeze or something like that as this transition happens. Um, second, maybe you're on the other end, you have a, a wonderful agency that's helped build out a site for you. Um, are they going to continue to maintain the site? If so, they'll need access. Uh, but if this was a one and done, then you may need to uh, remove their access from Pantheon once, it, once it's launched, or maybe they're transferring it over to you. There's a few different options of what can happen there, but it's just important to consider all the people involved and like what their role will be as this moves into this new phase. One other thing is as you're considering this and putting in a, a plan or a timeline, um, think about the time to live on your domain, so the TTL. Uh, if you can lower that down, it will make it so that it takes less time when you go to launch your site for everyone to start getting the new site. So um, those, those values often get cached. So instead of saying, hey, um, cache this for you know a week or two days, you can tell it, hey, do this for five minutes. Once you've made that change, you can then put it back up to two days because you probably won't move your site for quite a long time. Hopefully ever stay on Pantheon. No. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, up it once you're done. So you get that caching benefit, but lower it before you launch. All right, so um, picking a plan. Now is the time to think about um, pricing comparison. Um, so let's take a look at our pricing comparison page. So we've updated this recently. Um, we've got some information here on, on the different plans um, and pricing available. Let's see. Uh, down here, we've got key features about those. Um, a couple things that I want to call out here um, is just in this area. So this is going to be kind of the, the key area to be thinking about. Um, and you can see here is this important thing that is the object cache, not available on the most basic tier, but available on everything higher than that. And so object cache is really nice if you have login users. So if you're running a forum, uh, maybe you have a membership site, maybe an e-commerce site, you're going to, even if you're not getting a lot of regular traffic, maybe you're well within the, the traffic uh, pages served, things like that, because you'll want to consider these. But these are a little more obvious. You figure out what your statistics are and pick what's needed. Um, but the bump here is going to get you that um, object cache, which will speed things up, not just for um, anonymous users who are coming in and viewing your page, uh, but will speed things up for logged in users. Now, if it's just a brochure site, then you can ignore this specific change and just choose it based on the amount of pages that you have. Uh, but this this site here, again, it will be in the um, available in the links that I'll share out at the end. We'll have a quick link with all of this information. Um, but this page is a nice one if you're trying to figure out which plan will work best for you. Um, oops, here we go. So you're picking your plan. Um, again, here are those things to kind of consider um, what, what works for you. How can you tell? Well, one way to be able to tell and do this is to do some load testing. If we're migrating a site for you, we'll automatically do that load testing for you. Uh, but if you're moving your own sites, you can do your own um, load testing with that. And so um, probably the first step is going to be you're going to go into the back end of your website and you'll go down here to New Relic and make sure that you've turned it on um, so that you can begin to track 
to activate that new relic. And then once you've done that, you'll get something like this where you can click and go in and view all of your new relic data. Uh, the reason for this is this will monitor your website and give you information on it. We have a whole nother training about that, so I won't go into more depth. Um, but combining this with a tool that does load testing um, can allow you to run some testing um, on your website and see if it will handle the amount of traffic you expect to receive. And so if you're noticing slowdowns, maybe you want to, um, to to change your plan to make sure it can handle that extra traffic. Uh, or maybe you look in there and f optimize your site so it can better run it at the plan that you want. Um, or hopefully you go in and everything runs incredibly fast with the load that you expect. Uh, but these can be pretty handy tools for, for that kind of testing. Um, you will want to let uh, people know, so you can run this in your test environment, uh, but your test environment generally has half the containers available of the plan of your production plan. Otherwise it's the same. Um, so if you're, so um, letting people know they can scale that up to give you a more reliable testing environment when you go to do that. If you can just contact support for that. All right, and then there's um, additional performance tests uh, and checks that you can do. Uh, you can look at um, some of our performance guide, loss testing documentation. And then of course there are third party tools out there for looking at performance. Um, while New Relic is amazing for looking at back end performance, actually it has front end performance statistics as well. You can also look at these third party tools like looking at Google page speed. Uh, is that now? Um, web dev maybe, uh, Lighthouse, um, and then there's some other sites here that may monitor page speed as well. It can be handy. Um, another thing to do is to do a status check on your site. So I'm going to pull up one I'm a little more. My, let's see if this site's still up um, and not asleep. While that's coming up, um, in the back end, you can look at the status and run a check and it will tell you important things like, hey, maybe you don't have automatic backups enabled. Um, did you enable Redis cache? Uh, it's a really nice page to help you understand what your site can do and any updates that you might need to do. Um, if this loads up quick enough, um, I was going to show you can also get information on like any modules or plugins that might be um, uh, out of date as well. Um, hmm. uh, well, I won't worry about that now. I will, I'll just show here on this site. So you can go here under at status and hit run the checks and it will go through and begin to pull in um, that data. And so be like, hey, here's things you can you should check. So before you launch a site, go to your status page, run this, see if there's a bunch of plugin or modules that need updated, see if there's other uh, backups, things like that, that are important to, to make sure are turned on. In addition to that, you should make sure you have turned on your backups. So you can jump into the backup section, go into the schedule and set those up um, when you would like them to occur, how long you want to keep those backups, and you can do manual backups in there as well if needed before you launch. Um, and now we move on to step three. So we've moved our code into production. We talked about adding a plan. Now we're at that third piece, which was connecting a domain. Uh, so you go in, you enter a domain to connect, just put in the name here, hit connect domain, um, and then you're pretty much good to go. Um, the next step is that DNS step, but we don't have any slides for that because it's gonna be unique per site. So I'll go ahead and, and look at the one here. Um, so let's jump over here to domains. What's gonna happen is once you connect this domain, you're gonna get something that looks very similar to this. And so what we have in here is for pantheondemo.com, we've detected these are the values currently that in the DNS, here's what they should be. Of course, this is working in live, so they do match up. But normally, when you first launch your site, these won't match up. So you can copy these, go over to your DNS, and update those. Because that last step is unique, um, we try to detect that here and have different guides. So like, if you're using Namecheap, we have a link, link here to how you set up DNS over on Namecheap. Um, or if you're on a different one, um, different guides will be available. Um, but that's where it can be useful. If you do run into an issue, um, contact support. We could talk about it here. If you've got one right now, you could come to our office hours. Um, but we can work on those individually if you run into that. But most of them, what's going to happen um, is that you're going to go in, you're going to set up a record, an A record, where you say, hey, point to this IP. If they're, um, uh, you know, 
modernized enough or they're they're a, a newer so best practice now is also using the new ipv uh, six um, and so here you can go in and add quadruple a records so that you can update these and, and add that information in uh, and that takes us actually to the end of this training. This is of our, our shortest one, um, but hopefully it's able to answer any questions that you had. Um, so I will share out this link here in the chat. Uh, if you want to check out uh, the resources that we have available, you can jump in here um, and um, see the different um, things that we have available. Uh, on this page, we have uh, you can watch a recording of this uh, if you want to check it out again. Uh, we have the links that we've talked about here on how to do some of that testing and performance checking. Um, lots of guides here that you might need to know as you go to launch your site. And of course, important information on how to access our community resources, access support, things like that. Hopefully we'll get you what you need. Um, any, que uh, any questions now about all of this? Check in here to see if we've got any on our LinkedIn. Let me um, add this over there as well. Wow, I see if anyone has any questions before we wrap up. All right, I'm not seeing any questions at the moment. Um, I have pasted the link in the different locations. So um, check it out uh, if you get a chance. Otherwise, we'll call it for a day. Thanks so much for um, attending and have a good rest of your day.